In this video, we're gonna talk about green plumbing and we're gonna do it right now, but we're not just gonna talk about green plumbing. We're gonna talk about building green. As you see, I have a special guest, Eric G. So if you've never heard Around the House with Eric G, you need to check it out. Eric, how you doing, brother? Good to be here, buddy. Man, Thanks for having me in. Welcome to Texas. Man, you guys got humidity down here. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this is North Texas. Wait till you get down uh -huh. south around Houston or something. You'll drip all day long. No kidding, but I love it. And it's food's crazy. good. Good time. Everybody's been nice. You, you've already hit Mexican food. Oh, that's good. Now, do y'all have, have Mexican food like that up in Oregon? We do. We've got a couple places. We do. Oh. But, man... This is the place, and uh, even the to-go cocktails are an interesting thing, <laughs> yeah. but we're not going to go into that subject. <laughs> Governor Rabbit, thank you for the to-go cocktails. We love that here in Texas. So, you know, green plumbing. I started out about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I started out with Green Plumbers USA, great group out of California, teaches you a lot about water conservation, building green, and things like that. Later, being a commercial plumber, I literally became a lead AP, and I remember walking into the vice president of the company's office one day, and I walk in and he's like, Roger, no. I said, no, dude, I want to do this. He's like, no. He said, look, I have engineers that can't pass that exam. After I started studying for it, I realized why. And I opened the book the first day and I thought I was reading Russian. Yeah. So building green is huge. And I think it's going to get bigger as we go. I focus a lot on the plumbing end of it. Even though I'm a lead AP and understand most of it, the plumbing is big to me. You know, high efficiency toilets, aerators, shower heads, things like that. What about building green? What can homeowners do to help them, not just with their plumbing, but their entire, man, get get the footprint cut down? You know, when I when I think about homes, I think the 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 biggest cause and effect that people need to realize is not to create an unhealthy home while they're doing this. Because you can go around and put in that new siding and house wrap and windows and everything else, and you can be trapping so much bad stuff inside. You really need to understand that before you head down that road because you can make things, yeah, more efficient. But now if you're making it too green, there might be green stuff growing on your walls and you don't even know you're doing it. So that's the big cautionary tale that I say is, hey, dive into this, but understand the science of it so you can help manage it. Because it's going to take as a homeowner, you need to know a little bit of that stuff before you dive that far into it. And, and I love that. And it's a great idea because everybody thinks, look, I'll just run down to the box store and get something to seal my house up real, real tight. But, you know, being a lead AP, VOCs, things like that, you can get things in there that sick building syndrome. You're going to end up making yourself sick, your family sick. But man, then you make your house just a bad spot to be. It was funny. Last year at uh, the International Building Show where you showed up at one of my classes down Absolutely. there. Absolutely. I didn't realize this until we had uh, Vilux Skylights, you know, and I had one in the in the, in the the show home that we had there, that little, uh, in the high performance building zone. Well, it, I had it set up. So it's, it's all, you know, new technology. So when it realizes that there's too much carbon dioxide in the air, it automatically opens it up. We had so much carbon dioxide in there, it was forcing the forcing them all to open. Oh no! Because the air was so bad in the convention center, <sighs> and then we started realizing. And I went over and talked to the engineers over there. They're like, "Oh yeah, our church. This is going in the afternoon in here when everybody's in here. That's why everybody gets tired there in the afternoons. Is because and it's the same thing when you throw thirty people over for a house party in, in your you, home. You know, it was in Vegas. You think they could have just gone to the casinos and pumped some oxygen in? There yeah, or yeah. They, they, the casinos got that down. Absolutely. Well, there's money in that. That's why. So <laughs> Lots of money. Lots of money in that. But that was the interesting part is that, you know, when you get people over and everybody's in the house, you're having a good time, maybe it's winter time or the weather's not great outside, that just in itself is something that you can get it because you're all of a sudden, you're getting tired. You don't have enough oxygen going. Mm -hmm. So then you start putting in there, like you said, the VOCs, you've got molds, you've got all these things that you've got to be careful with. You know, and it's interesting because we've had, uh, you know, in Portland, Oregon, where I live, we have some of the most expensive water rates in the country. Really? So, I mean, it's expensive. My normal water bill in the house, not running the water, and I've got fairly efficient stuff. I've got, you know, one gallon flush toilets. I've got pretty efficient stuff. Right. And I mean, it's usually about 190, 200 bucks a month. Wow. Not watering the lawn, just normal. That's what it is. And so, even in Portland, where it rains all the time, that efficiency is a big dollar when you're talking about, you know, sending water down the drain. Now, are a lot of people in Portland doing rainwater harvesting? Not really. It's been interesting. Some are. The problem is we get so much rain that you've got to control that. I've gone out to projects where they put a tank up against the house and it was so big that they were breaking the foundation and had to replace part of the foundation. 
because they put a you know 1500 2000 gallon tank right up against the the basement wall and now it started cracking and coming in so oh, you've got to control the water when you can get you know if we have a really wet week we can have like you guys when you guys get big storms down here we can have three or four inches of rain pretty quick but it can do that for you know weeks on end and so you have to control it as well and that's kind of the harder part of the rain harvesting now what kind of annual rainfall do y'all get in portland you know about where you're at yeah i'm trying to think where we're at we're about where new york city is to be honest but okay. it, the problem is is that we rain we've had i think the record is like 45 days of rain straight but here's the thing we get rain from halloween to uh, labor day going up to kind of fourth of july right and then we won't get but just a little bit here and there all the way up through. So we have a just a very two seasonal mm -hmm. rainy season and dry season. We turn into almost desert there where we won't get rain for 45 to 60 days sometimes. Wow. And it's, it's bad here in Texas. Right here in central Texas, we get about, and I say central, north central on the vertical median, we get about 36 inches of rain a year. Yeah. The thing is, they say you don't want to be here the day we get it. Yeah. When, when we get it, <laughs> we get it. I talk a lot about green plumbing, of course, water conservation, toilets, shower heads. Uh, shower heads are huge, aerators, and toilets. That, that's your three biggest deals. Yeah. There's a lot of, like I said, rainwater harvesting, filtration systems. There's a lot of things that you can do to do different things to help go green. You're putting a heat pump in your house instead of going a gas water here or even a tankless. Exactly. What made you decide to do that? You know, I was looking to go in probably tankless to begin with. That was my, my oh, that's the way I'm going to go. It's a fish, you know, it's my efficient way of doing it. Uh -huh. And I was talking to the guys over Bradford Wyatt, and they're like, no, if you want efficient, go this way. And I knew they existed out there, but I hadn't really looked into it. And then I started doing the math and I'm like, oh, wow, that's way efficient. And I was shocked how efficient that was. And, and the installation is not near as much as a tankless because you really don't have to modify your gas line, your vent system. You don't have to do all those changes yeah. that a tankless requires. Yeah, so I'm actually disconnecting the gas from that and I'm going to sit there and uh, go electric. My meter is uh, in my panel box is brand new, and it's, what, six feet away, so it's right there in the garage. Good for you. It's in a good location. I've got a great spot for it, so I'm going to go that way in the next few weeks. Now, I've got gas. I've thought about doing a hybrid. I've thought about doing some different things, so that's something I'm wanting to look at next. My house, I mean, and I'm a plumber, my house where my water heater is installed in the garage to vent it out, two-story house, it was like, look, I'm gonna, it's going to cost me a lot of money just to make it where I can put in the tankless like I want to do. So we decided, look, we're just going back in with a high-efficiency high gas, but I've thought about going a hybrid or something like yeah. that. What other kind of things are you doing to help build a greenhouse? Some of the things I'm actually doing is I'm, 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 I've been really playing with appliances and saving energy with those. Like I've been using front load washers and dryers for years because, you know, you can run 12 to 16 gallons of water through a front load versus 50 or 60 yes, with a top load. Yes, big difference. And it's funny, in, even on the green side of things, that's a big savings of water. When you can sit there and affect each load by 30, 40 gallons, that's a lot of water. Okay. You start beating out even the shower head on that one as far yes. as what you can do efficiency wise. And if you've got you know a family of four where you're running maybe four or five loads a day on laundry catch up day, all of a sudden you've got something like that that you've that's a lot of water it, and it adds up quick it does and so i keep have been kind of pushing that way around my house it's fun to test it but the big thing is it saves you on clothes that agitator in the middle of that if you sit there and i did this one time i did a test okay this was probably 15 years ago i set up a front load and a top load washer and dryer set up right next to each other and then you look at the amount of lint that comes out when it goes through the same cycle. Mm -hmm. Same brand, so it was kind of a apples Scraping to apples. Scraping the cloth right off your shirt. Shirt, yep. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I got a blanket on this one, and I got enough to maybe make a sizable marble if I balled wow. it up here. That's cool. And it was amazing. I'm like, okay, so that is also saving my money as well. One of the things that I'm doing green-wise that I like to start doing now is I've been talking to builders about, and I think you might have even seen it when I was talking about it in that seminar, is new construction builders, when they're starting out, doing some environmental testing inside the home and it's interesting you can go in and actually do an air test inside the home to measure vocs formaldehydes all those things because there's been a lot of cases out there that i've seen where builders are getting complaints about formaldehyde in a home when they're done but you don't know the if it's insulation their, or, or what is it yeah yes. is it flooring is it cabinetry what's it coming out yes. of and all of a sudden many times it's the the couch they bought from the discount place so as a builder, you can also limit your liability by coming in and going, okay, here's my, I told you I was building a greenhouse. Here's my VOCs report before you move your stuff in. 
IAQ reports are huge. Yeah. Yes. And so now you can do that. Now you can say there's no molds inside the house. Here's this. The molds are better than they are outside. And that's the key that I tell people when you're mold testing. If you're using a testing process, make sure that you're taking outside tests as well as inside tests so you have a base model. Baseline to compare because to. if you're opening up skylights and open up windows and letting mold in, you kind of need to know what that what that ratio Absolutely. is. Absolutely. That way you know what it is. And then of course, you know, as you know, heating and cooling systems and makeup air and all those other things that uh, as you get that house tighter and you've got the dryer running and you've got two really good Panasonic vent fans running mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've got 400 CFM coming out of a very, you know, tight house. Now you're sucking in exhaust out of that gas water heater and you got another problem. And so. it's funny because I didn't even understand what makeup air was until I was doing big commercial buildings. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait, why, why do we have a vent coming from outside into the AHUs? Yeah. Or, or not a vent, you know, a duct. Yeah. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. Something something doesn't make sense here. Yeah. And then whenever I became a lead AP and started going back and looking at all the IEQ and everything that we were having mm -hmm. to do, it made a big difference. Huge difference. I mean, when you do an IEQ and, and you test, like you said, VOCs, it's huge. Yeah. And you don't know. And I like the idea of, too, going in and doing it when it's built before they move anything in. Come back three months later, six months later. Give that furniture time to off-gas. Give the carpet time to off-gas. Absolutely. And say, now let's test it. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody messed up here. Yep. Well, that way you can also, you know, you can also double check your vendors, too. Mm -hmm. Because you can sit there and say, hey, the can says this paint has no VOCs in it. But, but we're getting the, them. We're getting them. Where'd they come from? And 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 it could have been the the the, the painter forgetting the primer that he was supposed to grab and had some in the truck yes. and threw it up there and didn't know. So those are those things that I want to make sure that people are kind of walking through the entire process. That way they know, test, verify, make sure you're doing what you're doing. And, and most people don't. And that's, that's what really got me excited about becoming a lead AP is I was working at Fidelity Investments over in Westlake and I was having to check these reports, check VOCs on glues, primers, paint, sealants everything that we were using. And I'm like, okay, I don't even know how to spell VOC. You know, more or less, what is it? And I started figuring it out. And, you know, that's when I went to the vice president of the company and said, look, I want to become a lead AP. And he's like, you know, no, you don't. Yeah. Once I did, it's like, okay, this is neat. I mean, you literally, you have no idea an orientation of a building, the glazing, the glass, the roof, everything. It all, all adds up to yep. it and it all matters. It all yeah, it's deal. crazy. I, I work a lot with uh, Carolyn Blazowski, who's America's healthy home expert, and I've learned a lot. I've had her on my show a lot, and she's a great one because she does all those testings and stuff. She actually has a, a, a DIY testing kit that you can actually bring in and then send it back to her and stuff like that. So even for people in smaller markets that maybe don't have a company that's local to do it, there's always a way to do it. And it's fun that way. And it's, I want to start doing some more testing that way, especially in my house um, as I keep building. Because right now I've got a deck project, a kitchen project, and then bathroom project all kind of getting ready to fire off at the same time, which is going to be uh, a crazy shoot schedule. But I'm also trying to put in those green things as well as one of the things I'm actually getting ready to play with now is one of the new uh, water sensing units that does leak detection. And I'll tell you what, we're going to talk more about that in the next video. Eric, how can people get in touch with you? AroundTheHouseOnline.com is where you can get everything on there. It's got my podcast. It's got everything else. We've got all one spot. And, of course, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All Around the House with Eric G. And connect on LinkedIn, too. Absolutely. That's where I'm watching you every week. Guys, I love this. It's great having Eric in here. Brother, I appreciate you being here. I really do. And guys, make sure you check out the next video because we're going to talk more about remote leak detection, what he's putting in, and what I know about. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.